Hello, it's Keith here, and this is another YQuest lesson. Today we're going to be looking at the PC Engine version, and we're going to be looking at the platform-specific code that handles that version. So what is YQuest? Well, YQuest is a little game I wrote originally for the Z80 systems, and I later ported it to the 6502, which you can see here, hopefully. So uh, I'm playing pretty terribly, which means it's a perfect port, because I always play terribly. Uh, you can see Actually, the game is currently only using the tiles. It's based on the simple series code, which was using the tile map to draw bitmaps to the screen. So we've got this quite chunky movement, which um, isn't ideal. Now, maybe later on, I'll make a version that uses sprites instead. I haven't quite decided yet. But for now, this is, as I say, this is what the game is. It was designed to be a quick, simple example for, um, the, for these tutorials. And of course, you can download the source code for it. So let's go over to the code and let's see what actually makes today's version tick. OK. So here's the PC Engine code, and we're going to go through this, and we're going to discuss the challenges of this particular system. Right, well, the first thing we've got here is the definition of the screen size. Each system has different sizes, and it affects things like the tile map and the text positions. So we need to define them there. Because we're using the tile map to draw the graphics to the screen, we don't have a lot of precision with regards to the drawing of the objects. And so the collision detection is having to be restricted to make sure it matches what we can actually draw. And that's what these definitions are doing here. We've then got definitions for the zero page entries, the user RAM, and the positions of the zero page and the stack for some of my common code. And we're defining the direct page address here. That's a definition for our assembler. This is Vassam I'm using. Now, this is where things get a little bit tricky. Because um, this game uses a bitmap font rather than a one bit per pixel font like um, Grime did, the YQuest game is quite a lot bigger than Grime. Now, this caused a bit of a problem because the um, banking on the PC engine works in 8K chunks. And an 8K chunk wasn't enough for the game. So the game split out into two banks. And that meant I had to do some page switching to get the game all into memory. Um, and this made it a little bit tricky. Now, the game is actually starting at hexadecimal 4000. But when the game first runs, the um, program code will actually be running at hexadecimal E000, I think it is. So we're going to have to bank in all of the other banks and then jump back to the correct address around 4000. So the code at the start can't do any absolute calls or anything like that to memory addresses because it's not yet really running at memory address 4000. That's the address it will be running at after the um, flipping. And you can see this is the restart where we jump to the correct address. So after this, we can use a call. OK, so initialization at first is pretty straightforward. This is the same as in the simple series. We're just um, in initializing the I.O. and the RAM here. But then we've got a new part here. Now, what this is doing here is mapping in the various pages of our ROM here. I think we're actually mapping in more than we need by quite a lot. But I figured might as well do the job properly, being as we're going to have to do it. So what we're doing here is we're paging in all of these 8K chunks, consecutive chunks, from 4,000 onwards to the end of the address range. Now, we've done C000 to D FFF here. But before we do the last one, we need to jump and now start running the 4,000 range that we paged in here. Because when we're doing these commands here, our code is actually running at E000. So if we paged in while it was still running, we could get um, serious problems, basically. So we're jumping to the 4,000 range and then paging in that last bank here. And that will now have paged in the entire addressable range from 2000 onwards with ROM. And that will hopefully work. It seemed to work in my testing on this emulator anyway. I don't have a, a real um, cartridge to test on real hardware, but it's, I think it should work. OK, and then we've now got our screen initialization. This is all the same as before. We've got a palette initialization here. We're just transferring the palette data to the palette. We're selecting the palette address here and then writing each of the settings here to 04 and 05 here. And that will set up the palette. We'll see that palette later on. And then we're transferring all of our tiles into VRAM here, and that includes the font. So that's all being transferred there. We're then clearing the game data. And this is the data that's used for things like object positions and things like that. Our next stage is to show the title screen and reset the game. So here we're resetting the lives and the level, things like that, clearing the screen. And then we're going to show the title picture. That's that thing up there to the screen. Now, the title definition is very simple. It's just one byte per um, tile, which is probably part of the reason why the, screw the game's so big on this system. You know, we could have used just one nibble, I guess, saved some memory, or used RLE even, but I didn't. So um, it's quite big. 
Anyway, it's, it's okay for a simple game. So we're transferring one byte in, and if it's not zero, we're drawing that tile to the screen here. We're calculating the address within the VRAM here and showing the sprite to the screen here, repeating until we've shown the entire tile map. And that shows that Y-Cross logo. We then show the text to the screen. That's the um, press fire message, the high score, the URL, things like that. We wait for the player, the player to press fire, clear the screen, reset the player position, and initialize the level. And this happens every level, not just the first level. Level init will actually create the objects, the, um, the crystals, the enemies, things like that. And then we've got our main loop here. Now, the first thing we're doing is we are using X as a store for any keys that are pressed, and Y is our counter. So why is that loop? We can slow the game down or speed it up. We're also using a second loop in B because the PC engine is very, very fast. So we're reading in from the joystick and if any buttons are pressed, we're storing them in X here. Now here's the start of our drawing routines. The first thing we're doing is we're showing the score and the current lives and things like that to the screen in Draw UI. Then we're removing the player sprite from the screen. We set IX to player object and use this blank sprite routine to remove it. Now the game has a key timeout. When you press up, down, left or right, it increases the acceleration, but we don't want to accelerate too fast. So if the key timeout's not zero, then we ignore the key presses for a short while. The actual acceleration is done by this ink and deck of IX offset by Y. IX points to the player object, and the Y acceleration and acceleration, X acceleration are stored in Y and used as an offset from the player object to change those parameters, and it's these subroutines here that increase or decrease the acceleration depending on the direction of the key presses. You can see them there. Okay, now if the player presses fire, we'll fire a bullet, and if they press fire two, we'll actually stop the acceleration dead in its tracks. And so that's just an immediate break option, which is quite handy. We then update the key timeout. We've set the key timeout if up, down, left, or right were pressed. You can see them there. We then do draw and move, which handles all of the other movement of the common objects, things like the enemies, the animation, the collision detection, and the bullets. And then finally, we jump, jump back up to here and repeat, and that's the main game loop. Now, the clear screen routine is going to use the sprites, and it's going to set each of the tiles on the screen to zero here. You can see that's just looping around, setting them all to zero. Print char will use the inbuilt font, which we've moved into um, sprite RAM. Now, the first 96 tiles are the sprites for the font. The characters below 32 before space are not represented, so we subtract 32, and then we use show sprite to show it to the screen. Now blank sprite will use the object pointed to by IX. Um, each object has an eight byte definition, and the collision program is used to define what kind of object it is. If the object's 255 or, or greater in the collision program, then it's a dead or uninitialized object, in which case we don't want to do anything. But otherwise, we want to blank it, and we do that by drawing sprite zero, which is the space character to the screen. Here's get sprite address. Now, this is for when we're drawing bitmap data, like the parts of the YQuest logo. We add 96, because the first 96 characters are the font. And then we add the sprite frame and the 16 tiles per bank. So, and there's four frames of animation for each one. Now we've got this routine here called do get sprite object. What this does is it gets the sprite position and the X and Y position from the object itself that's been pointed to by IX. It does that there. And then here we've got our show sprite routine. And this is going to calculate a tile map position and then it's going to change the tile accordingly. And so what this does is it will set the visible tile based on an X and Y position here. Here's get VDP screen pause. This is going to calculate the tile location within VRAM and it will actually select the VRAM address here and that will allow us to select a tile that needs to be changed. This is all based on the simple series bitmap example. Prepare VRAM here and define tiles. We've looked at these before. These are for transferring bitmap data and selecting VRAM addresses for transferring data to VRAM. As I say, those are in the simple series and I've also covered them in the platform specific series. Here's our joystick reading routine here. This is based on my platform specific series. We're reading in the first joystick and we're converting it into a relatively common format here. So we've got up, down, left and right, two fires and the two start select buttons here. Now, wait for fire is waiting for fire to be pressed and released. And while that's happening, it's re-randomizing the random seed here. 
the um, read controls routine here is a little bit tricky here. We have to reset the multi taps and then we have to read in four of the directions in one go. And we do that and we do that here, transferring four of the bits each time. Next, what we've got here is our font and our four banks of sprites here, the four banks of animation rather. Now these are all transferred into video RAM at the start of our program. And then what we've got next is the end of the first bank of 8K here. And it's important we put this in a position where we've not yet gone over this boundary, which in this case was okay. And then we are defining the reset vector, which is E triple zero, which will jump to the start of our cartridge. Now, as I say, this bank, although it's at 4,000, to 5FFF will actually be loaded in E000 to FFFF when the programs actually run in the real position. So this will actually be FFFE and will jump to the start of that bank when we're actually running in real memory. And so that will start our cartridge up and then the rest of the code at the start of the routine will handle the paging in of the banks so that everything ends up in the correct position. We've got some common routines here that handle the code on all of the systems. And then finally, we've got our palette here. And then the last thing we're doing here is we're just padding out to a full 8K bank to make sure that the cartridge is the correct size. And that's um, relatively all there is to it. It was a bit of a pain getting the bank switching working because I hadn't had to worry about that before too much on the um, PC engine, but I, I think I've got it working okay. And um, it did allow me a nice big cartridge without having to worry about making the game smaller, which was the um, priority when I was writing this one. So there we go. Anyway, that's YQuest on the PC engine. As I say, always, you can download YQuest from my website. The your source code is free and you're welcome to do with it whatever you want. You can change it in any way you like. And if you somehow manage to make a commercial game with it, best of luck to you. You don't even need to give me credit for it. So um, I'm hoping it might be some use to you. If it is, then great. Anyway, whatever you do, I hope you enjoy your programming and whatever other creative projects you're working on. Thanks for watching today and goodbye.